and we were talking one day and I looked at my mom and I said, Mom, you know, I said, in today a lot of parents are friends. And my mother looked at me and in a weakened state and she always had that smile and she always had a phrase that she used that I would slap you. <laughs> I learned to appreciate that. But she looked at me, she said, I was never your friend. I was your parent. She said, your friends are out there. You made friends, but I was your parent. I was there to raise you, to give you guidance, and to show you the direction. And I prayed to God that I did the best that I could. And I appreciated that because in my work, I deal with parents who are trying to be friends and I deal with babies who have had babies and I deal with individuals now to where the grandmother is like 42 years old and the daughter isn't much older and their daughter or granddaughter and they're all in the club fighting for the same thing. Because we quit being the parents. Even when we're talking about Islamic and you know development and that type of thing even to the point are we being the parents to make society conducive so our children are proud to wear the hijab proud to reach out to other faiths proud to be able to be who they are or are they stepping back because there's no place to go swimming there's no place to play basketball there's no place so they can enjoy life as it is in America because we're building masalas instead of building mosques that's being able to meet the needs of our communities. Are we bringing people in when other faiths are building computer labs and building social services agencies within the mosque and we are and within the churches and the synagogues and we are not? Are we really having some real conversations? When you go on further in 1992, you can see home went down to number four. You see peers begin. When you're 99, you see home went down to the bottom because we no longer made home what it was supposed to be. You see, when you talk about care and you talk about the struggle, you got to have a beginning. Care is a result of us not dealing with our beginning because we have to understand that the civil rights and human rights struggle did not begin yesterday. It did not begin in, in September 11th. It did not begin. It began in a time that individuals were also brought to this country as slaves. When individuals were not looked at as human beings and were strapped to poles and hung. When they turned around and they made fun of individuals because they wanted to show that there was a superiority there. We have to understand the depth and the sincerity and the, what we're dealing with today. We're dealing from historical perspective because if you don't know what you come, you don't know where you're going. We have to understand that when individuals were being hung, when individuals were being burned, when churches were being bombed, understand now forward, fast forward, and go to the video that we saw where mosques were being burned, where Muslims have lost their lives, because why? I know a lot of times we don't want to hear this, but you asked me to come. <laughs> so if you ask me to come, I'm going to tell you what I say. Because we have a reality that we have to deal with. That doesn't mean that we're blaming anyone because a lot of our situation is conditioning. An individual does not come out of the womb talking about I hate Muslims. Does not come out of the womb talking about I hate Christians, I hate Jews. You don't come out of the womb. That is a societal conditioning that we have. When we have a little sister that gets shot, killed because she wants an education. We have a problem. But we're hollering about that today. The question is, were you hollering about it when they were hanging women and cutting the baby out of, the, out of their stomach and stomping on the baby's head because 
That is what we have to look at. I didn't come here to entertain you today. I came here to plead with you today to get more involved, but to look historically and look back from which we have come because for care to be the potent organization that it is, that means you have to get involved. You have to historically understand from which we have come. You now have to ratchet up and go a little far, further. You can't be comfortable at home just giving a dollar. You give a dollar, you give more. You sign it. I watched individuals. As I said, raise us up and give a dollar. Not only give a dollar, your time is necessary. We can't have it just on a small staff. Everyone in this room is responsible to do something. To do something within your heart. To go forward and to give an hour here and an hour there. It's the board's responsibility to develop new leadership coming up to reach out so new leadership can come in and be able to give some of that energy that's there. We can't stay around forever. You can't have a board that is not giving life to an organization. And I'm not saying care is not do that, so don't, don't leave here saying I jumped on the board. Understand I'm saying that's all of us have to look at it that way. We have to go into action because action is important. What gives me a right to speak this way? Because I've been involved with this civil rights and human rights movement since I've been 16 years old. This year I turned 61 years old. Because I read a phrase one day from Mark Twain. Mark Twain said there are two important days in your life. The day you are born and the day you find out why. Once you find out why, then you make that commitment. And when I was 16 years old, I made that commitment. And at that time, I, what I had to join in with was the Black Panther Party, and I became lieutenant of the Black Panther Party. And in Des Moines, our, our headquarters got blown up. There were six of us in the house. It just happened that we were late in our education class. And if we had not been late, then I would not be talking with you today. If I was talking with you today, then we would be on a whole different plane. <laughs> when I came out of there, I realized that a commitment had to be made and that we had to be able to say what was important to say and stand up for what matters and be able to tell the truth no matter where you were at and what you were doing. I realized that in this struggle that we needed to continue because we are talking about the things that in 1968 we're still talking about them now in, 2000, in 2013. We're having the same conversations. Today, you're talking about Muslims organizations by the, by the police department, by the FBI, and everything being investigated. Ask my brother, who, let, who just stepped down from the NAACP. The NAACP was noted back then as the most terrorist organization in the country, the NAACP. As peaceful, fighting for civil rights, Never bombings and everything, they were bombed. You're talking about three baby girls in Birmingham losing their lives because.